All right, so in part one, we did the um, we did kind of an introduction to um, uh, touch up work with the portrait and kind of got a, uh, <clears throat> an overview of some of the basic tools and concepts that you use when you're doing um, some touch up work. And then now in this um, in the second part here that we're going to do right here is we are going to apply a sharpening technique. And this is one of three sharpening techniques that I kind of use commonly in my bag of tricks um, when I'm doing post processing work. And it's um, the simpler of the three, but it's also one of the most effective ones and the one I probably use the most. It works great with portraits. It works great with um, um, high resolution um, um, images, images that have uh, you know good quality image data and uh, whatnot. It, it works very well for those. So we're going to use it here because this is that type of image. And let's just go ahead and walk through it. And I came up with this about two or three years ago. I guess it's actually a little over three years ago now that I think about it. Um, and again, there's a ton of different um, uh, tutorials out there, you know, with regard to sharpening. Um, and they range from, you know, very amateur basic stuff to very advanced, um, you know, black belt kind of Photoshop um, techniques. So uh, this one is, like I said, it works very well. And... Um, apply it here. So the first thing we're going to do is we are, we are going to go ahead and duplicate the layer and you can do that again by hitting Control J um, on the PC or um, uh, the command button I believe on the Apple and J or equally you could also just take the layer and drag it down to the new layer um, icon. So we've done that and now what we want to do is we want to go up to filter and we want to say filter other and high pass. And I already did this, um, I already walked through this before I started the screen capture. So my settings are already set um, based on what I did the last time I was here. So um, I came up with 2.5, but let's go ahead and start from scratch and talk about how I got there. So if you want to apply this technique to a photograph and you just want to pull out um, a detail, then, and, and not kind of go into the surreal, but keep things realistic looking, then what you want to do is you basically take the radius slider and you start over at the left and you start to work your way right until you start to see what I call the sketch lines or the um, this is going to be the contrasting lines here that um, show different tonal values and this is going to be your um, where the details actually apply so you want to bring it out to the point where it shows the outline the basic sketch lines of either your uh, your your central objects or your actors in the scene and you just basically want to keep it at that so I, I arrived at 2.5 as being pretty good it doesn't have um, any real haloing around the edges of the lines which is what you want to avoid uh, when you're doing this technique otherwise it'll show through in the output um, now if I were to continue to move the slider to the right you can see what it starts to do and if I continue to go it starts to move into kind of a, a pseudo HDR look and feel and with a lot of um, kind of high level advanced Photoshop work uh, in terms of like layer masking and blending modes and, and, and a series of post processing techniques, you can start to use these high pass filters um, in such a way where in combination with the right techniques where you start to move your image and your output more towards um, the surreal or um, more specifically, I guess, um, that Dave Hill effect. If you're familiar with Dave Hill, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not familiar with Dave Hill, go to Bing.com right after this um, tutorial and check out his work. It's absolutely mind-blowing. It's beautiful. Um, a lot of photographers and digital artists are trying to uh, crack the Dave Hill code. And, um, and I've come pretty close, but um, you know I haven't seen anybody um, nearly as good um, uh, as Dave Hill or anybody come quite up to that level. Um, so it's something we're all kind of trying to achieve, you know, and everything he does isn't isn't nearly just about the photoshopping and the post process. It's actually about the lighting and the way he shoots his subjects. Um, anyway, enough about Dave Hill. Go check him out. Absolutely fantastic. So back to uh, what we were doing. So I'm going to scale this back down to what I said originally, which was 2.5, which again will just show the um, sketch lines of the um, of the subjects. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And as you can see on the retouch copy layer, which is where I applied the um, the blending mode, it it has been applied. Of course, that's not what it's going to look like in the final output. So what we want to do next is we want to go to the blending mode here and say overlay. Okay, and I'm going to actually zoom in. Oops. Actually go 
in. Well, I'm changing my blending mode. Let's move back to overlay. And I'm going to come up here. And you can see when I turn it off, the difference. See how nice that is? Now, if this were um, uh, for a project or a client, um, I would actually scale this back a little bit. And I'd probably go down to 80 or 85 because there was some pixel blowout here in the cheek area, and it looks good at 85. So you can see the difference. You can look at the eyes specifically and the lips, and you can really see how it's different. Um, so that, in a, in a nutshell, is the um, um, the high pass filter um, sharpening technique that I use in, in my post processing. And um, it, like I said, it works great for high resolution images. Check it out and um, feel free to play around and experiment with it. You know, maybe find different blending modes or combinations of this. Maybe um, duplicate this layer again and do something different. Um, you know, there there are a ton of different things you can do. And if you come across something, you know, hone it in into your own style and skill. Let me get rid of that. So you know, so that um, you have kind of your own techniques that you can share with other people and and the community. So that said, um, you're going to want to move on to part three to complete this image. Um, because the next part is where we apply the wedding glow filter effect and it's a beautiful little effect for um, a lot of pictures and I think you'll really like it so check it out